This special package, which funnily enough looks the same either way up, contains a very interesting smartphone that has just been announced. This is the next Xiaomi Black Shark gaming phone, and we'll get to its crazy specifications in a minute, but first of all, inside the package, you actually get Black Shark logo stickers, a tempered glass screen protector, and a case, which, unlike most of the ones bundled in with your phone, you will want to use for a very specific purpose. So it's a good thing that although it is fully plastic construction, it feels solid. Also, you've got a USB Type-C to headphone jack adapter, you've got the USB Type-C cable itself, and a charger which supports 18 watt charging, and Qualcomm's Quick Charge 3. Also, every Black Shark device comes bundled with this almost Nintendo Switch-like controller, which we will come back to. This phone looks beautiful, with a two-tone metal and glass finish, and a pattern that kind of looks like what you might find on a manhole cover, not to mention this glowing logo, it's definitely distinct. It's not full-on aggressive like the Asus ROG phone, a little subtler, a little more refined feeling. There are also a lot of small touches here too, a green chrome accent around the phone, a green inside of the USB port, and even green around and behind the dedicated shark button. On balance though, you'll probably want to keep this case on. It's a complete contrast to the way most phones feel with their super curved bodies, but it has a special function here, and there's also a lot of ridges to grip. I still like the way it looks and feels. A few things immediately sprang to mind as I turned it on. Well, the screen looks nice, shame about the screen to body ratio, and oh, that UI is a lot to take in. Like the Razer Phone 2, chopping off the bezels here clearly wasn't a priority, and also like that phone, the speakers make up for it. You get loud stereo sound with really good separation, partly because of the physical distance between the speakers. Playing Alto's Odyssey on this phone really pulled me in. The screen is a 6 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED panel, and it looks good. I'm actually fine with the resolution, I'm currently running my Huawei Mate 20 Pro on the same res even though it could go higher. And it's good that it gives you display options like a colour temperature slider, and even white point reduction, which basically reduces the intensity of really bright areas, making the screen less strenuous to look at. The LED lighting is not just on the back, but on the sides too, and it looks wicked, but also plays a functional role. If you're receiving a call or a notification, the side lights will not just light up, but pulse to grab your attention. And if you are an RGB fiend like me, there's a lot to fiddle with. You can pick any colour, use gradients, and even adjust the speed of animation. And in an indoor setting, it's pretty bright, but if I was using this as my main device, I could also see a case where I would just turn this all off to save battery. Speaking of saving battery, the UI here is almost completely black with bits of green, which on an AMOLED panel like this, helps. Not to mention, it's visually distinct for sure, although for me, I think it's a little much, I would have preferred a slightly more toned down aesthetic. There's loads of stuff I want to spend a bit more time with, like key shortcuts, which can start a screen recording when you press the power key and the volume up at the same time, frame rate optimizations, and even anti-addiction settings, which controls the amount of time you spend on games. Oh yeah, and it's got Magazine Unlock, which basically changes the wallpaper every time you unlock the phone. Very simple, but something I personally quite like. So then there's Shark Mode. Flicking this key closes all other apps and opens a dedicated gaming space. But right now on this prototype, well, everything's in Chinese. It goes without saying that this is a very powerful phone, with a Snapdragon 845 and up to 10 gigabytes of RAM. So obviously it's going to absolutely chew through most games, but at the same time, this is still what I would call a current gen chip, so it has the same limitations. This is where the controller comes in, and it slides into the case, which is why I was saying earlier that if you really want to get the most out of this phone, you kind of want to keep the case on at all times. It connects to the phone via Bluetooth, and I don't really have a problem with it, apart from the fact that I guess it's just another thing you have to worry about keeping charged up. But it provides two shoulder triggers, a joystick, and four directional buttons, which is a lot of controls, and they do feel console grade, really nice construction. Just bear in mind that it's very tricky to use the joystick and the buttons at the same time, so really it's one or the other, and the rest of your game you'll probably have to use with on-screen controls, with your other hand. The battery capacity is 4000 mAh, and while I haven't had a chance to test it out properly, considering the display size, the specs, the RGB lighting, and Android 8.1 it's running, I could make a pretty good estimate that it will be just above average for a flagship. 
And the last main thing here is the dual cameras. You've got a 12 and a 20 megapixel sensor. And from what I've tested, again, not by any means a full review, the HDR is great. Um, I haven't gone into portrait modes, low light shots, any of that stuff, but initial impressions are pretty good for a gaming phone. Okay, so that is the just announced new Black Shark device from Xiaomi. Let me know what you think, and if you enjoy the video, it would really mean a lot to me if you could smash that subscribe button down below. Plenty more stuff on plenty more phones coming soon. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.